All right, guys. Well, welcome to the April 2019 Cyber Expo. My name is Fausto Puglisi, president and founder of Cyber Train University, and we are doing the Cyber Expo with three great speakers, including myself. But first, we're going to start off with Hima Reddy, and we're going to have Larry Gans from Power Cycle Trading. And then I'm going to finish off and tell you a little bit about stock trading and you know why the flash crash might come again. Who knows? But uh, a lot of good stuff going on. But before we, um, you know, before we get to you know, started just really quick. I want to do a quick little intro about HEMA. Um, I know HEMA for, uh, it's been a, almost a few years now. And, uh, you know, she started a career as an analyst, not lurk, working too far from, from where I am. I, I pipe a jet freeze um, from uh, 2014 and 16. Prior to that, HEMA has covered fixed income and currencies uh, in the global markets. And, you know, she's very well known. She, she's also a um, Reader of her first book, uh, basically him is beginning to share examples of her trading concepts through the free blogs. You can find out more about that through her website, but she's going to teach you a lot about how to profit beyond overbought and oversold stocks. And that is basically going to be the real topic for today. So uh, I don't want to take too much time for her. She'll tell you a little bit about her, more about herself. But uh, Hima, thanks for being here at the Cyber Expo. And everyone, enjoy the presentation. Thanks for logging in, everyone. Thank you, Fausto. I really appreciate it. And um, make sure everyone can hear me. Can you please type? Uh, I always ask for an AV, audio visual, you know, like the club back in high school. Let's me know you can see my slide deck that has my big orange logo on it and hear me. Please uh, confirm and we'll go ahead and get started. So I'll also use uh, the uh, all important disclosure slide to kind of keep our, our uh, presentation moving here. As you all know, uh, most likely, that trading and investing can be extremely risky business. And it is your responsibility to take what you learn here from me, from Larry, from Fausto, and make sure you study it, make sure you evaluate the information, opinion, advice, or whatever it is we're sharing, okay? Because we're all gonna be sharing methods and tools that have worked for us for a long time, but that doesn't guarantee that they work all the time. So again, to serve as a final sound check, if you could please type D, just the letter D for disclosure. That way I know you're hearing me. Uh, Fausto came through loud and clear. I'm looking at the chat box, just waiting for some letters of D to come through, and then I will begin. All right. I'm not seeing much coming through, so can you guys confirm that uh, I'm being heard here? Or Fausto and team? All right, I'm just keep uh, gonna keep going here, just to see if maybe there's a little delay. So my story began with learning about technical analysis and the trading of markets from my dad when I was a teenager. It was a very unusual, unorthodox route. But I actually went off and studied at Indiana University and uh, learned the whole you know, traditional finance route, but I didn't see anything when it came to charts and patterns and candlesticks and all that. So I went ahead and moved back home without a job, which my dad and I agreed to because he said, work part time and I will teach you trading. And we did this and he had a textbook for me that was written by this man, W.D. Gann, many, many years ago and said, start with this book. It's been around for a long time. It should really assist your learning. And he also sent me with trade station software because he said this was the best and I still use it today. And he had me look at a bar chart, just like you see here, a one minute bar chart, not a lot going on, but he had me observe this. And as I read the book and observed the chart, I could see the buy and sell patterns coming up you know, on the screen. And then I realized that the more I take Gans words and turn them into visuals, the better I'll uh, be trading. So I took things to the next step and made these little handy cards for when I traded. And then I realized, well, wait a minute, if I look at the market before it even opens, maybe I'll do better. And so I started writing my own little reports that were preparation for the session ahead, and I call them the skinny on the mini. And I started sharing it with my dad, and he told me that you know this was helping him uh, be able to better understand the ES and better uh, make profits off of it. So I said, okay, great, I'm on to something. And so I carried on and decided to pursue the analyst route and step away from trading for a bit. And so I went ahead and got my CMT designation. So this allowed me to be a professional technical analyst on Wall Street. And when I did, uh, people got wind of this unique story of mine and they heard about my unique path with GAN and a publisher approached me and actually said, you know what, um, would you write a book that shows your experience on GAN's work and actually uh, be a primer for all these complex materials for their traders? So I said, sure. And I wrote my book and it came out in 2012. So then suddenly my whole world opened up. I was no longer just a you know analyst on Wall Street. I was a teacher and people wanted to see examples of my work. So I shared my skinny on the mini as an open blog. And then it became just an emailed newsletter. And life carried on and I moved out of New York. 
because I married my husband who is pictured here. We're not cartoons, obviously, but we had a save the date commission in a comic book style because I love uh, comic books and superheroes and all that stuff. But my husband is from Wisconsin, which is next to Minnesota. And our jobs brought us to Minnesota. And between his Midwestern roots and our positions there, I actually had to shut down the skin in the mini for a while because I worked at Piper Jaffrey, which is an investment bank. You know, you can't do any of your own side research in those situations. So I went back to everyone who'd been getting the skinny in the mini and said, hey guys, I'm gonna have to um, shut this down and we'll see if it comes back. And then they started telling me how sad they'd be to see it go because they were using it to improve their trading and pull concepts out of it. So I thought, you know, I'm gonna have to bring this back someday. Let's see when and how. So the last bit of my moves include uh, a jaunt back to New York. My husband and I were in Buffalo for some time. And then we settled more recently in St. Louis, Missouri, more of his career path. But in our move from Minnesota to Buffalo, I had to leave my sell side analyst job. And I thought I'd just get another one, right? I was an analyst. I was a corporate person. But unfortunately, my dad passed away during that transition. And it forced me to reevaluate you know, how I spend my time and my ability to be there for my family. And I had to make a choice. And so instead of going back to the corporate route, I decided to take all these techniques and tools that have been working for me and start teaching them to folks. And I did it by bringing back the skinny on the mini first, making that a monthly subscription product, and then taking off from there, creating more educational products and services. So that is my story. That is my, my path that leads me here to teaching you today. And now we're going to dive into our content for the session. Um, but again, I'm, I have a feeling I'm just speaking and it's not coming through because I'm not seeing any confirmation in the chat. So if you guys could just engage with me, just type an S for story, S for skinny, anything like that, I would appreciate that. Or even just say hi, Hema, any, anything so that I know you can hear me. <laughs> because again, usually, and maybe I'm, I'm just talking about my students, they're usually pretty responsive there. All right, thank you. I appreciate that, everyone. Awesome, okay. So let's go ahead and now dive into our agenda for today. And first I'm gonna go through the basics of what I call RSI power zones. So let me paint a little picture for you guys. You know, you, you start with your trading software, whether it's TradeStation or Thinkorswim or anything else. And do you remember when you first got it and how excited you were because you thought, hey, you know, it's gonna have all these powerful tools, but then you open up and you realize they're cookie cutter, which is, you know, the best they can do. They're pretty much what everyone else is looking at. How are you going to have an advantage looking at the RSI in a way everybody else is? Well, that was a challenge I faced. And in my studies for the CMT, I came across a way to look at the RSI that worked better, that used more of it. But then I developed more on that tool myself. And so this is how I, I explain how this works. So let's take the football field, you know, American football, because uh, if you ask my husband who his, you know, comic book superhero is, he will say the Green Bay Packers. I mean, he grew up 20 minutes south of Green Bay. But when you have the Packers on the field with anyone, you know, let's say their biggest rival, the Chicago Bears, then these two teams are trying to accomplish the same objective, but they're moving in different directions. When the Packers have the ball, they need to get through the Bears defense, get to their end zone to make anything happen, right? So only in the zone does anything happen in football. Same thing if the Bears have the ball, they have to get through the Packers defense. So this goes on and on and on until there's somebody has more points than the other. Now, how does it relate to the RSI and the way I use it? Well, let's take the football field and let's flip it around on its head. Now we have a zero to 100 range and we're gonna drop that down on a subchart with a standard RSI, okay? So if you started off with TradeStation today and you plot the RSI, this is what you'll see. A squiggly line, I mean, I changed maybe the base color to gray, but you'll see red, at one part and blue at another. So right here we have an example of this E-mini S&P 500 futures contract, which again, I started my training with through my dad and now still provide research on it daily. But whether you're familiar with this market action or not, this is very similar to what's going on in the other broad markets, the big S&P, SPY, ETF and more, right? I captured this chart yesterday afternoon, so it's pretty fresh. So let's take a look at the traditional RSI for a second before we switch it up. Now the traditional RSI stands for Relative Strength Index. It was put forth into the world by Wells Wilder in 1978, and it had a, a big impact. Okay? A lot of technical analysts came in and started deep dive studying it. Now the rules that are the general that you'll learn and that this um, standard indicator depicts is that when you have a, a, a daily chart to plot or an hourly chart, it doesn't matter, you're using a 14 period setting. That is the only part of the RSI that we're keeping exactly the same today, okay? 
So we are not changing the 14 period setting. Otherwise, what I'm about to teach you and the signals off of it will not work. So this is so important that if you would please, if you're new to my work, new to the r slide power zones, please type the number 14. So I know that you won't mess with that setting. If you decide to experiment on your own, that's fine. But then don't come back to me and say, hey, Hema, that signal didn't work. All right, I'm telling you that it won't if you mess with the 14, all right? So the two parts of the RSI are this overbought and oversold you know, levels. And the overbought is above 70. So above 70 is where things are in condition where all the buying supposedly has gone in, they're ripe to turn over and the indicator turns red. So you can see back here in the run up into the beginning of 2018, this was helpful. But look at for how long it was overbought, right? That would have got you in a very top picking kind of mode, which is not really healthy for your trading. There was a brief instance during the run up out of the consolidation breakout into last fall. But otherwise, there was not too much to use in a trending environment looking at overbought this way. Okay. Now, in the more recent price action, we've been in a recovery rally, or not a recovery rally, this is a rally now, um, move higher. But you can see, again, there weren't too many instances to help you um, figure out when to take profits, et cetera. So this is one piece of the puzzle. The other piece of the traditional approach is that when the RSI falls below 30, it's considered oversold. And this is where buy signals live. I think we can all agree that the signal from February 2018 was fantastic. It was great. And that's what we would use, right? But what about the ones that came in after the fall high? They were just for recovery rebounds. They weren't new signals to go along. How can you tell the difference? You really can't with the traditional RSI. There was another great signal at the end here, but see, there's, there's ones that come into the beginning of a new uptrend, and then there's ones that are just rebounds in the downtrend. How can you tell the difference? So this is where we come back to this whole football zones concept and then tie it into the RSI zones. So remember the bears, okay? When they have their zone in the field, they are focused on it. That's where they got to go to make points. And when you look at the football field this way, the bears live in the lower part of the field. Well, it's the exact same approach when you're looking at the RSI and you're looking at market bears, okay? <clears throat> this is the first slide where if you're following along, you may want to take a screenshot or a photo with your smartphone or whatever for your reference once it's complete, okay? But of course, keep it to yourself because you took the time to be here today. <clears throat> there are four total power zones. The first, as I'm showing you, is the bear resistance power zone. Now this is from 55 to 65, as the red area shading is showing you. So we're not looking at 70. 70 is not part of the conversation anymore. And what this means is that when you're in a bear market or downtrending market, when the market rebounds or recovers, it generally will coincide with the RSI capping out between 55 to 65 before price turns. Okay. So there's several examples that will be in this chart, but let me show you the bear support power zone first. The bear support power zone is from 20 to 30. This is a whole cushion now to look at for your oversold conditions when a market is weak. And if you think about it, a weak market should be able to get more oversold than a sideways or a bull market. That's why it's very helpful to have this frame of mind that keeps you from 30 down to 20, not just at the 30 hard line. So let's look at this consolidation back in early 2018. See how I just highlighted a high that formed in price that the traditional RSI would not have notified you of, but the RSI power zones would have, and been the first clue that perhaps this recovery from the February low is not gonna sustain. In fact, this was actually a little bit of a double top and both highs formed in that zone. Later, when we had the fall from the September high, you can see that the recovery rallies, now these are areas to potentially sell, coincided with RSI capping in the bear resistance power zone. If you were just looking at 7030, you would have missed this, okay? So this is the approach that allows you to take more of the RSI and um, apply it to your strategy of your trade, and there are signals involved as well. We'll get to that shortly. So this is the bear scenario. Now let's move on to the bull scenario. I'll give you a second here to grab your screenshot, photo, whatever you'd like. So the market bulls, they live in the upper part of the field and you'll see them get up to 80 to 90 before a market 
will be considered overbought. This makes sense because a strong market should push higher than a market that is neutral or pointing down. So you can see here that the last of the four zones is the bull support power zone from 40 to 50. So this entire platform is higher than what you would use if you were looking at 70, 30, okay? So now I'm gonna point out a bunch of opportunities along the way that emerge from the bull support and bull resistance power zones that you wouldn't have seen otherwise. Starting all the way back in the late December 2017 or late November 2017 run up, see there was an opportunity to enter long that was notified or signaled by the RSI power zones, not the normal RSI. After the breakout from consolidation, there was a pullback. It showed RSI holding the bull support power zone. And after that was another opportunity. Even in the recent run up, there's an opportunity where the RSI power zones would have showed you, hey, this uptrend might be continuing higher instead of you having to wait for that 30 level, okay? So this is the structure behind the RSI. Again, those of you who are newer, maybe needed a moment to kind of take these uh, snapshots here, you can go ahead and do that for your reference. And you can just type a Z for zones if you're newer to the work and now you're ready to proceed, you understand the basics. Z for zones, that'll help me know that I'm coming through to you guys, all right? Okay, so now let's move on to the next category here. And this is gonna be movement through the zones, meaning let's look at how this actually plays out on markets that you might be familiar with, okay? So the RSI power zones work on any active market in any time frame, And I'm gonna start with an example of commodities on a monthly chart because I want to um, make sure that you guys see that it doesn't matter what time frame or type of market you're using, you can apply the RSI power zones. All right, good old crude oil. So specifically light, sweet crude, WTI, tick, uh, ticker symbols uh, CL or at symbol CL if you're looking at the continuous contract, okay? So oil is something I think most traders are familiar with whether they trade it or not. So I wanted to use this as a walkthrough. Let's take a look at just what I'm showing you, which is, you know, well, basically 10 years ago. And we're gonna reveal, the white space will show you new price action, but I don't wanna teach you with the benefit of hindsight. I wanna unfold as if this is happening in front of us. So looking at the price action that's in this run up, you can see first that there are these four delineated zones. Okay, I've taken away the shading and now we actually just have vertical, or sorry, horizontal lines, green for the bull zones, red for the bear zones. Now, when you look at this, you can see that there was a run up from the bull support power zone to the bull resistance power zone matching the strong advance higher in price. Okay, so when a market is trending higher, you'll generally see movement from the bull zone to the bull, excuse me, bull support zone to the bull resistance zone. Then there was this massive tumble, right? And this huge tumble in price took out a previous higher low in price. We had new price lows. And now this is a monthly chart. So there were clues on the weekly and daily, but on the monthly chart, we went from the bull resistance power zone all the way down to the bear support power zone. The important thing here is that anyone who thought that this fall in price was just like one fell swoop and oil was gonna go back higher, if you're looking at RSI power zones, might be more cognizant of the bear resistance power zone up ahead, the two upper red lines. And that ended up being extremely helpful even through all of these years of sideways trading because every single time oil futures came up to the bear resistance power zone on a monthly continuous chart, they backed off. It was a clue that the bearish pressure on this market was not necessarily gone and you could start watching this range of price action. It finally resolved to the downside. And when it did, notice there were two distinct legs here, okay? High, low, high, low. And they both traded down into the bear support power zone. See that? So this is the importance of looking at 20 all the way down to 30. If you had just been looking at 30, then back here at the early 2016, sorry, the early 2015 low, you might've bought, oh, that's it. This is the low in oil, and this is a great place to buy. And maybe for a few weeks, but that was it. Now, taking us into last summer's price action, there was this recovery, and we saw a return to the bear resistance power zone yet again, which led to the fall that we saw 
and which we're now recovering off of, okay? So this should just help you understand how price moves through the zones, especially if you're seeing it for the first time. All right. I know there's a little bit of a lag between me asking you questions, you guys answering. So I'll be cognizant of that. But if this is the first time you're learning about RSI power zones, please type the number one for me. Just a one on your keyboard means first time, never learned this indicator before. That way I'll have an idea as I'm progressing here. All right, so we got commodities, we got monthly. How about we go to an ETF and let's look at a weekly time frame. Okay, we're gonna cover more varieties than this, but let's go ahead and do that. Now let's look at the SPY ETF, okay? And let's look at the price action that unfolded within the past couple of years. Again, I'm taking market action that you guys might be familiar with so that I can see what, um, or you can see how this all unfolds and comes together, okay? Again, we've got these zones laid out, just a reminder. Now, I have the RSI power zones available for TradeStation and other platforms, and you can see that it plots the numbers out. You'll still have to memorize what pairs of numbers mean what zone, but they're always there as a reminder. So in this example here, we had a price breakout higher. Now, it was over a couple or several months of uh, sideways trading. But when that occurred in mid-2016, notice that there was a pullback on the weekly chart of SPY that came to the bull support power zone. Okay. Then there's the run-up we all are familiar with up into early 2018. Where did it go on the RSI power zones? It went right up into the bull resistance power zone. See how looking at the two bull zones would have helped keep your focus if you were trading the SPY or anything tying into it. If you're looking at this in the weekly chart after every week's bar finish, you would have stayed in line with the trend, much more likely that you would have done that as opposed to looking at the traditional approach. Now, after that strong advance higher, there was a lot of chop. We saw that in the ES daily chart. But look, even in this one sharp correction that's two weeks worth on a weekly chart, we went from the bull resistance power zone to the bull support power zone in one fell swoop. Okay, it still respected the zones. We got sideways consolidation, and in that sideways range, we were basing out holding two price lows and two RSI lows in the bull support power zone. Again, those two green lines towards the lower part of the RSI. Broke out. Okay, again, this is what we're all familiar with. We broke out to new highs in the fall, but there was a new price high, but the RSI was capped near the bear resistance. Now, it was not technically in the zone, but it capped near it. So we made a higher high on price, but we did not make a higher high in the RSI. This was the first clue that something might not be in sync. Since then, obviously we saw a fall down into very late December, and that price move took us down into the bear support power zone. So even if you kind of missed the memo when the market high was forming, okay, we didn't over at uh, the Skinny and the Mini team, I actually called the ES high to the day, September 21st. And for the first few days afterwards, it was sideways action. So I wasn't quite bearish for my subscribers yet, but I was relatively quickly before this first red candle formed. So coming back to what's going on here, all this way down, we stayed on the short side of ES trades or NQ, which I also include in, include in Skinny and the Mini because the bigger picture was showing momentum still staying to the downside, all right? So these walkthroughs are to get you familiar with how this indicator works. And now we can go and take it to the next level. So we're basically uh, covered the basics, looked at the movement so that we can get familiar with it. Now let's use RSI power zones to identify trade setups because it's not as simple as seeing price just jiggle between the zones, okay? If it was, then you would just need the first half of this presentation to be on your way. So here is one of my key approaches to um, identifying the setups. It's a three-step process. So at the end of this slide will also be another one that you might wanna capture for reference. Step one, review the chart and assess the price trend. Huh, how come I'm not talking about RSI or momentum? Because price is the king, guys. Price rules, price is fact, and nothing supersedes it. So 
we've got to make sure that whatever signals we're looking for on the RSI are in line with the price trend. Now, this gives us choices. So whether you're looking at a daily chart, a weekly, a 60 minute, it doesn't matter. You can go up, you can go down, or you can be sideways. Sideways is an option. Once you assess the uh, chart and know the price trend and you've made your determination whether you're in an uptrend, downtrend, or sideways or correction, then you evaluate the RSI power zones reading. And the way you do this is by looking at what the RSI number is relative to the four power zones. That's how you know the position. Okay. And when you do this, the use of a preset indicator will help you a lot, meaning having those green and red lines drawn in, but it's not required. You can just memorize them, like you probably have gotten used to 30 and 70 if you've been using the RSI, but it definitely helps. So we assess the price trend, and then we look at where the RSI is relative to the zones. The next step is to see if there's an entry signal between price and momentum. <clears throat> now, this is a broad um, step, right? You have to obviously know what those entry signals are, and I'm going to teach you one today. There are a variety, and this is the part where I took the basic concept of RSI power zones and I built out on top of it. So the RSI power zones uh, signals that I said are a combination of signals that either help you take advantage of a trend that's changing, which is what we're going to look at now, or there are signals that help you trade with the trend. Okay. So this covers the verbal explanation of how you find these trade setups. Now I'm going to walk you through a couple of examples. I also will be able to, time permitting, go over to my trade station charts and we can look at the latest markets and see what other setups there might be. So back to this idea that we can use RSI power zones on any market, any time frame. Stocks daily. So mixing it up a little bit. Okay, we've got another asset class and another time frame mixed in. Now I'm going to show you a call I actually made to the HemaReady.com family. This is archived. It can you can go back and check it. So in April of 2018, I pointed out on Netflix an opportunity and it came to pass. So I'm going to show you the steps that would have helped you identify that same opportunity and that you can use to identify opportunities that are coming up on any of these markets, FANG or other stocks as well. So I'm going to repeat the steps on each of the slide. And that way it'll start to get ingrained into you. Step one, review the chart and assess the price trend. All right. Well, if you're very new to assessing price trend, then the simplest way to do it is you know you're in an uptrend if you've got higher lows and higher highs, and you'd be in a downtrend if you have lower lows and lower highs. So let's look here. Let's take all the way back to the price action that I'm showing you. Well, there was a whole lot of basing and kind of sideways action, but there was a high here. There were some lower highs after that a low that was down here, this black line, which is a 200-day exponential moving average. That's one of three moving averages I use as a trend filter for those times when you know, counting the bars can get a little um, foggy. After price broke above the first high I annotated, it went all the way up on a gap, probably earnings related, to this high right here. Notice that was with the RSI at the bull resistance power zone. Pulled back, it made a higher high, and that's what we've got so far. Is the current price action going to make a low? We don't know yet. I haven't showed you what comes after. But this right here is a potential higher low. It's something to keep an eye on. And because this price action has not violated the previous swing low, we know, okay, we're in an uptrend in price, but some sort of corrective pullback is in motion. And we don't know if it's over yet. So step one is done. Now we take our eyes down to the RSI and we evaluate the RSI power zones reading. So we're talking about the latest value right here, the very end of the RSI line. Where is it? What zone is it in? Well, I see it between two green lines. That is the 40 to 50 area, which is the bull support power zone. So in an uptrending market, the RSI and Netflix at that time was holding the bull support power zone. So that allows us to proceed to the final step. Okay, taking this information, then we can go and look at step three, which is identifying an entry signal. So I do see a signal right here. 
it is a very short term signal between just several days of trade action, but it's valid. And I'm going to draw it out for you. So we're looking between price and momentum. So these two yellow lines are highlighting an instance in which price made a lower low. Okay, the low of this large green candle is lower than the previous, but the RSI registered a higher value. Now, RSI and price are supposed to move together. So the beauty is that when they don't move together, it's actually a heads up for you. This is what this signal looks like in just a general illustration. We had a movement down on price. So in this case, it was a corrective pullback. And we had a lower low in price, but a higher low in the RSI. This provides an RSI bullish divergence. Now, the bullish divergence signal is not unique to me. I did not create it. However, when I started learning about RSI power zones and then separately learning about divergences, it became clear that the location of the divergence relative to the power zone determines your strategy. And if you assess them together, you can actually make even more use of what the RSI has to offer. So let's come back to our Netflix action. We said bullish divergence, and we already knew the RSI was in the bull support power zone. So together, this combination is coming back to football lingo. This is an offensive play, meaning, you know, attack, go for it, get in the market. Now, you didn't just go stick your hand out and take whatever market order you can and, you know, hope it works out. There's strategy to apply on top of this. And the nuances of that I cover in my RSI Power Zones Workshop course, which I'll tell you about in a little bit. But looking at this signal on its own, let's see what evolved from it, all right? Here's the price action that unfolded as of last summer. So I made this call in the spring, so I'm showing you through the summer. There was a low that formed on April 4th at 271.22. And this traded up to a high that was the extreme high of the move until a correction back to the 200 day moving average, exponential moving average. So that high of that move was $423.21 on June 21st. So all of April, all of May, most of June for this trade. Okay, so almost three months. And the amount of the move was $151.99. When you look at the price relative to the first low on the RSI, that's almost a 50% move higher. That's an opportunity that by looking at RSI power zones and looking at the divergence signal, you would have seen come up on your chart that other people aren't seeing. That's the benefit of using indicators that everyone's looking at, but using them in a different way. And for me, this is uh, proven by the 17 years I've been using it, okay? So this is a walkthrough on a stock and a daily chart of, again, a call that I made so that I can kind of uh, validate that. This isn't just, I went back in time and cherry picked, right? I actually pointed this out as it was happening. Now let's look at another example and let's get another asset class in. So we'll still do a daily chart, but let's go look at a currency, FX. So we're here now I have chart of the Swiss franc, ticker USD CHF. So while I get a sip of water here, remember and try to remember on your own, what is the first step? What is it that you're supposed to do? And then we're gonna proceed. All right, you should have been thinking of reviewing the chart and assessing the price trend. Well, we've got a high way back here, a low, a lower high and a lower low. This right here, these four pieces of information were the first signs that a downtrend might be unfolding and then it persisted, okay? And so right now, we don't know if this is the low, but so far, based on the price action I've shown you, there's two higher bars around it. And so this is the lower low that's keeping this downtrend in motion, where there's no corrective action yet to the upside. It's just beginning. Then we evaluate the RSI power zones reading. Where is the RSI? Well, it's right here, right at the bear support power zone. It went down from the bear resistance zone, which held the RSI all through this downtrend, fell to the bear support power zone. Now, it already fell on the previous low. So that's why just trading down to the zone and trading up from it is not the best form of the signal. It 
can reinforce other things you're seeing on the chart, but that alone is not a signal like teach. Here, we have another instance where we have a higher low on RSI, even though price made a lower low. So again, that's a bullish divergence. Oop, I'm going backwards. So that's a bullish divergence. And where is it taking place? In the bear support power zone, meaning we have a bullish indication on price, but this time it's in the lower zone. It's in the red to lowest lines. This brings about a different strategy. This is more defensive, meaning if you happen to be short, protect your profits, lower your stops, but this is not necessarily a, a place to go long just on its own. You can, but that would be aggressive. So I don't teach that at the first you know, phase of using this information. I only share that with folks who are really looking to um, escalate and advance their use of the RSI, and that comes around later. So this is what initially came off that move, okay? A rebound that took out the previous lower high. So that would have been helpful, right? If you were short anywhere along the way here, it would have been helpful to see, hey, we took out this recovery high and maybe it's time to reassess. So this indicates that the downtrend may be over. It's your first warning. And so you should definitely be looking to exit short positions. Now, not only was this valuable to help you protect your profits if you were already short, remember I said that the aggressive move would be to take action on this low because it's a bullish divergence in the bear support power zone. But if it fits your risk reward and if the other parameters come into play that you can use to make the trade, the candlesticks, the moving average action, et cetera, this is the price move that unfolded that you might have been able to take advantage of. Even if you didn't consider this until after you had evidence that the price trend was changing, so even if you didn't consider taking this until sometime in March, okay, or sorry, later March, because I made this call. In March of 2018, I made this call pointing to the signal. Here's the move that unfolded. Just measuring all the way down from low to the high. The low is 0.9186 on February 16th of 2018. The high was 1.005, I think it's 0050, on May 7th of 2018. Now, I don't trade FX, so when I did the math on what the size of this move is, I was astonished and I checked with one of my colleagues who trades FX and he validated my calculations. On one contract, this is an $8,600 move. March, April, May, three months, guys. Now, I'm not saying you would have clocked in $8,600 worth of profit if you were trading the R side, but what if you got a chunk of that? What if you got 6,000 or 5,000 or even half? What if you didn't get in until it was totally safe after the high was violated and then you didn't get out until after it was a clear top? That's still a very sizable opportunity, all right? And trading isn't about getting in at the exact low and high, it's about getting the big chunk of the move. So this is just another example. And again, these are calls that I made. I've switched gears this year to not focusing so much just on recent price action in my slides, but holding myself accountable to market calls I made and seeing if they come through. And these are just two that I've detailed step-by-step. Step. I have a page here. And when we go over to TradeStation, I'm gonna show you other um, setups that I pointed out to my subscribers and my students that help them just using exactly what we're talking about today. Now, this is all just you know one part of the puzzle. So if you are a big comic book fan like me and you're ready for more, then let's go ahead and talk for a minute about how to master RSI power zones, okay? And then I will take uh, ticker requests uh, with TradeStation, if I can read them in the chat box. I'm having a hard time seeing anything, the latest uh, messages, but that's okay. I'll talk about some of the markets you're probably wondering about anyway. But how do you master RSI power zones? How do you take what you just learned in this session You've learned the indicator, you've learned a signal, and then go to the next levels. Well, as I mentioned, I'm opening doors to my RSI Power Zones workshop, which is one of my three educational courses. I have two subscription products as well. And so these trading courses give you the full education to get you on your way using RSI Power Zones. So the first element that's involved is video tutorials. And this covers my favorite RSI pattern setups, the best candlestick pattern for trading with RSI, which I have a lot of experience with candlesticks. Um, 
I wrote candlestick questions for the CMT exams, both the multiple choice and the essay. I graded those questions. And interestingly enough, my other area of expertise for the CMT exam question writing was momentum. So I share this because if I had to figure out how to put a question out to a young professional's training for an exam, I have to use those same skills to be able to teach you guys what's in my head. And me knowing how to use this tool is just one half of the battle. Me being able to impart it to you is the other. So if you feel that you're able to learn from me in this style, then you should be able to learn just as well on my course material because it's presented in a similar fashion. Trading bar chart reversal signals. I mean, who even talks about bar charts anymore, right? But I bring this up because bar charts are a key part of the GAN analysis. Remember that orange book and that gentleman GAN that I learned early on from my dad. And so I always, on bigger picture timeframes, especially like weekly charts, look at the weekly on a bar chart. And there's key areas to identify support and resistance that I blend in with the RSI power zones analysis. So these are just some of the topics in there. Now, the other part about this is not just video education, but a cheat sheet. So again, referencing back to you know high school, middle school, remember maybe you had a science class and you learned about some in-depth topic on Monday. And by Thursday, your teacher wanted to quiz you. So if they were kind of a nice soul, they'd say, hey, bring in half a page of uh, paper with your formulas written, et cetera, and you can use that for the pop quiz. So I'm here to help you succeed. I'm like, there's no test in the market. The test is, you know, the amount of money in your bank account or your trading account. That's how you know how well you're doing. So we want that to improve and grow. And so I'm giving you cheat sheets that take the concepts in the workshop course and help you learn faster by having a reference. So it's just a PDF file. You can download it, keep it on your machine, or you can print it out on paper. That's what I do. And for example, see, we have all these divergence setups. So I taught you bullish divergence today. Bullish divergence is the bearish counterpart. We have each one of our zones. Well, they all match up to different offensive or defensive plays with different nuances. So you will get this full cheat sheet and more by signing up for this workshop. Now, in this workshop only, not in any of my other courses, I include the RSI Power Zones indicator because it's my first workshop I ever made. And so for as long as I can, I want to keep the indicator in there. So this is available for all the platforms you see here, TradeStation, Thinkorswim, NinjaTrader 7 or 8, and more. These are all listed on the page to sign up as well. So it's a no limit situation, meaning you can come in, you can download it for TradeStation. And then let's say you decide to get um, uh, MetaTrader, right? That's FX. Well, go ahead and, and download it there as well. You don't have to pay again. You don't have to buy anything else. And if I ever create this indicator for a future platform, you will get it automatically. When I first put this out, it was literally just TradeStation. Then within three or uh, weeks or four weeks, I had NinjaTrader and Thinkorswim. And as I find developers, uh, programmers to create these for the products you guys are using, I'm happy to help and put it in there. And you don't get charged for it. You can also put it on as many machines as you like, all for the same one price, no limit download. So all of this together is great, but this is all without my help. So what I do is I offer you a live bonus session. So this will be coming up in early May. Those of you who sign up, you'll get invited, you'll get a GoToWebinar invite, and you'll have the ability to answer, ask questions on the material, so you'll have time to review it, and we'll go through your answers you can submit your ticker requests in advance and I can come in prepared with full analysis of the markets you're caring about at the time. The session gets recorded and placed in your portal for your portal, excuse me, for lifetime access. So whether you can attend live or not, you will get access to it. Those sessions are generally going forward on a Tuesday at noon. That's the usual time. So again, if you know you're not available at noon for some reason, don't worry, you'll still get the recording uh, in your portal as soon as it's processed. So all of this together is what I'm offering you. So far, you've heard about my use of the RSI, my um, experience with it, but let me just share some of my traders' experiences. So in just a few months, HEMA's RSI indicator has become the standard in all of my charts, said Rob C. Found that interesting, remember? I told you that in the beginning, you open up your platform and you have standard. He made this a new standard for him. I installed the RSI Power Zones indicator and it's just amazing how accurate it is on all markets. It actually gives advanced warning before the price moves, said David in Washington. And my first month using RSI Power Zones was also my best trading month so far. Susie from Colorado. 
who's still a skinny on the mini subscriber with me and uses the RSI in that market and others. So special offer for today's attendees, the on-demand video tutorial and cheat sheets, it's a value of 19.97, live Q&A bonus session is a value of 2.97, and the RSI Powersons Indicator retails for 4.97. So this is what the retail value of these items would be if you were trying to pull this all together on your own. So this is a value of over $2,791, but I am offering this, especially for those of you new to my work, uh, at the original uh, low cost of 197 That's just a one-time one investment. This is not a subscription product. So $197 gets you all of this for life, and you can sign up at tradethirsty.com forward slash RSI. Trade Thirsty is a group that I partner with. Uh, trader, other trading educators partner with them as well, including Fausto. And right now, my website it should be getting back to normal, but it was having a little bit of an issue. So I said, hey, guys, can we just use your site to host the sign-up page just in case things are wonky at hemoready.com? So that's all that that is, all right? Everything will be back up and running if it's not already within a few minutes here. So tradethirsty.com forward slash RSI. And this is available through Sunday. So today is Thursday. This is available through 10 p.m. Eastern Sunday. So why do you need the workshop? Why can't you just take this RSI power zones, the signal I taught you, and be on your way? Well, because I give you the detailed strategies on how to best trade with the indicator. I prevent reinventing the wheel. That's a very dangerous exercise because it wastes a lot of energy. And therefore, in the long run, this is going to save you time and money because you're not going to have to go and try to figure this out yourself. You're using my 17 plus years experience. Here are the emails that you'll get once you sign up. I share this because as my story explained to you, I was on your side of the fence, guys. I was like new to the market, new to charts. Then thankfully I had, you know, a guru. I had my dad to guide me through, but sometimes we buy courses online and not even know if we were set up, if we had everything we needed. So here are the two emails you get that show you're, you're hooked in. One is your login access. The other is receipt from Seller Wealth. That's my company name, okay? And so here's everything all together. I still have a good amount of time to go and bring over my trade station screen. So um, if the folks here at CTU would go ahead and let um, everyone know tradethirsty.com forward slash RSI, because I'll have to pull away from this screen in a moment to bring up trade station. All right, so I'm gonna show you some activity on RSI power zones in recent markets. And um, if you have tickers you'd like to see, please type them in. Uh, even with the delay, hopefully I will see them. Meanwhile, I'm gonna come and share the screen that I want to, and we'll come back to this summary uh, towards the end here. So now I am sharing, uh, you can see my entire screen. All right. So I think I got it now. So maybe the, the team can confirm if you can see my trade station charts. Okay, I can see it as well, perfect. So remember I was talking about this um, bigger picture monthly situation, right? And how we had rallied into the summer and then we covered. See, we're still recovering. Now let's go look at it on an intra, you know, inside of the month. Let's go look at it on a, a daily chart. It would be a good option. So I'm coming here to my oil futures daily chart that I keep for analysis and right now, using another tool that I layer in with RSI Power Zone. So is this a separate course is on market timing, but a tool that I teach openly is suggesting that we're gonna continue higher into April 15th. So that's just a helpful target for you uh, for oil futures for about $64 or 63.75. But look at the RSI Power Zones. Do you guys see them down here? Based in the Bear Support Power Zone, what happened on that December 24th low? Bullish divergence, bear support power zone. And then it started resuming higher and it never looked back. Price kept making higher highs and higher lows. RSI also kept doing that. So the trend was supported by the momentum action. And notice there were several instances here, January 14th, January 28th, February 11th, where the RSI came back to the bull support power zone and then kept moving higher. Um, I think Larry is overtaking my screen, so <laughs> we'll wait here for a moment. Um, if you don't mind handing it back, Larry, I think I've got a few more minutes. 
All right. Meantime, I'll just talk through what I'm doing here. I'm going to switch over to a chart of ELP because that's something I get a lot of questions about. All right. And uh, yeah, if I can get this green back, that would be great. So I'm just going to try again. All right. I'm just going to overtake and see if it works. Yep, sorry there, stole it back from Larry, but hey, I got a couple more minutes here. So let's go ahead and look at Apple latest price action. So again, this is a chart with just a lot of different analysis going on right now. Notice, same signal that I just showed you from oil that was from my USD CHF example. Bullish divergence down the January 3rd low in the bear support power zone. Again, I generally teach this as a defensive move because when this recovery was happening in Apple, we didn't know if it was gonna be the end of the downtrend. But even if you waited for that confirmation, this would have been a clue to you. And then guess what? All of this uh, breakout, the January 30th breakout happened at the RSI was coming up out of the bull support power zone, okay? So added confidence for you to come and maybe buy up shares or any of these dips that have been in place. Right now, Apple's not showing any signs to me at this right moment that it's going to be um, capping out or anything. So I have an upside target um, expectation into April 9th. So you can see my resistance levels laid out. We're currently kind of oscillating around the 194.97, which has been holding price action, but next upside target on Apple is 210.12, okay? Another one I get asked about a lot is Micron, MU. So we'll go take a quick look there. So again, on this chart, because these are my kind of general open analysis charts, I don't have all my um, techniques on there, but let's take a look here. We have a, this coiling around this 200-day exponential moving average, which um, in itself doesn't mean anything except the market's kind of sideways. But take a look down here, bullish divergence, February, uh, December 26th versus the October 29th low in the bull support power zone. Again, literally the same signal I just showed you. USD CHF, oil, Apple, now Micron, okay? And since then, look at how it's been taking off. Now, here, there was a much bigger move that had to be um, reclaimed. So it had to get above this high before I would consider suggesting any buys. But in my stock picks grid over the past several weeks, I did point out at least one point here, hey, I think Micron is ready for another move higher. And so this RSI signal is what kind of got me on guard, all right? And then I was ready to, uh, to, to, pro to provide that further evidence depending on the price action unfolded. Okay, let's do one more. Let's go look at Amazon, again, because I get a lot of questions about it. And uh, this is uh, maybe Fausto's crowd, so I think we're more stock traders here. So Amazon, in this whole sideways consolidation that lasted for January and most of February, our side was basing in the bull support power zone. Now you could argue, well, it was also in the bear resistance power zone, but look at what the price was doing. All right, let's draw in. We had a low, then we had this, which was going to possibly be a lower high versus the December 3rd high. But then this consolidation started to form. Okay, we had a higher low relative to that spike low, but then we had a lower high relative to the consolidation high, another higher low. And if you are just simply even monitoring higher lows, higher highs, and looking at the different combinations, that's what allows you to then draw patterns. This is what allowed me to draw out this resistance trend line and say, hey, that's a pretty good area to watch. If we break out above it, we're probably going higher. And that's what happened, okay? So since then, we're on our way higher. The next key timing point for Amazon is April 9th. Interestingly, it's the same key date as for Apple, which is also April 9th. So what I think is that this market's gonna keep rallying up into that date and then pull back off, all right? But you can see here that the R side power zones after doing a bullish divergence. Now, actually, no, this one's not a bullish divergence versus the most recent low. So I was getting ahead of myself. But here, simply looking at the consolidation and paying attention 
to which direction the breakout occurs, the R side power zones were giving you some clues, okay? Not as strong as on the other examples here, but I brought up Amazon because people ask about it a lot. So I think with that, it's time for me to maybe just show you guys uh, the details of what I have to share again. Want to make sure that um, everybody can uh, take advantage of it if they're interested. And so I'm going to go back to that screen really quick. So here it is. So you guys should see again, we're back on my um, RSI Power Zones workshop slide. And what I have here is just a summary. So again, you get on-demand video tutorial. This is a few hours of training. You can get through it, but you can keep watching it and keep learning from it as much time and many times as you need. You get those cheat sheets. It's a PDF that you can download and use. And you get a live Q&A bonus session with me, plus the indicator to use right away, okay? And the doors close at 10 p.m. Eastern on Sunday. And um, the website is tradethirsty.com forward slash RSI. And you'll see when you sign up that this should lead you to some optional add-ons and you will be able to take those offers with one click or deny them with one click. That's completely optional up to you. One is the next course I have on RSI Power Zones called Top Trading Strategies Using RSI Power Zones. It's completely separate education material, but it still works with RSI Power Zones. And then the second is a Skinny on the Mini 30-day trial. So there's a brief video that walks you through what the Skinny on the Mini holds these days, but it is um, E-mini S&P 500 futures, it's got NASDAQ, and um, there's more. So you'll get information about that when you're in there. So um, I don't know if maybe the team here can let me know if there's any questions that have come through that I should be trying to address. Um, I'm not trying to finish early, but I definitely don't want to finish late and throw off the schedule here. So um, if maybe Hillary or somebody can help me out and let me know if there's any question, just retype it to me. If not, uh, I guess I'll just go back to the trade station until I get kicked off here again in a minute. So I'm going to head back to trade station for a moment. And let's see, I'll show you uh, another. I'll show you what I'm seeing on the ES right now. I guess that would make sense because I'm looking every day. Thanks again for your time, everyone. Hope you found this to be helpful education. Hope you go and check out our side power zones on your own markets and timeframes. And remember, I've got the RSI Power Zones workshop available for you for 197 at tradethirsty.com forward slash HEMA, um, available till Sunday at 10 p.m. All right, HEMA, thank you very much for that, uh, you know, a great presentation, everyone. It's always a pleasure to have you here at Cyber Trading University and talking on behalf of all the traders.